Instead of posting a boring photo to social media, you could try posting a GIF because you can grab the attention much better if you show the before and after of your work in a more dynamic way. So listen, maybe you like to do makeup tutorials. Maybe you're a designer and you want to show how you started and how you finished your design. Or maybe you're an educational YouTuber like me and you make photo editing tutorials. You want to show the before and after applying some effects or editing. Here's how to do it. So I'm in Photoshop and I already prepared the two layers. Let's say I transformed this photo into a black and white version, so I have a before and after. So to start doing the GIF, the first step in Photoshop is to go to Window and enable the timeline. This is where all the animation will happen. All layers that you created on the right side will be added here in the timeline. I can zoom in with the slider just to make the timeline more easy to understand. 30 FPS in this case means 30 frames per second, so you can leave it like that. And here on the left, I can see what's the total length of the animation, four seconds and 29 frames. I want to make it just two seconds long because the animation will be on a continuous loop. I'm gonna take this end marker and bring it to the two second mark here. Then I select the first layer, go to its end. And when I see this icon, I drag the end of the layer to the two seconds mark. And I'm just gonna do the same thing with the second layer. I can zoom in even more now to fill up the entire workspace on my timeline. Now I need to ask myself, which should be the first image that I'm going to put at the start of the animation? And of course, I will show the before layer first. Remember that we have a total of two seconds and we also have two images. Let's split these two seconds in half. One second for the before image and one second for the after image. I'm bringing the end of the before layer to the one second mark and then I drag the start of the after layer until the one second mark as well. So if I hit play, you can see in real time what's happening in this animation right now. And also you could do some extra things here. For example, you can add text that appears separately for the before and after images. You can just press T for the text tool. I recommend choosing a very clean font. One of my favorites is this one called Proxima Nova. Make it extra bold or bold. I will choose pure white for the moment, for the color, and maybe enter uh, 300 points for the size, so it's big enough. But you can choose any color you want, of course, depending on your image. So now I can add my text and write before. Now I can use the paragraph properties to center the text. And if you don't see this panel, you can enable it very easily from Window, Paragraph. Okay, while the text is selected, I can press Ctrl A to select all in the document. And this will enable these alignment commands at the top. And I will use this one called Align Horizontal Centers. Now my text is in the middle of the image. All I need to do is to bring in more to the bottom. So first I press Ctrl D to deselect. Then I grab the Move tool from the toolbar. I hold Shift and then I move the text more to the bottom. Shift helps you to maintain a straight movement. It's awesome. Let's make the text more visible because it's white on white at the moment. So I can right click on the text layer, choose blending options. Then I can enable color overlay and change the color of the text. The next step is to enable the drop shadow. I will put the opacity at maximum, distance to zero, spread to five, and I increase the size a lot. And now I can decrease the opacity a bit. And then I press OK. Let's create the second text and this is so easy. You just have to make sure the text layer is selected and then press Ctrl J to duplicate that layer. Let's hide the bottom one for now. I renamed this second one to after. And I also double click on this text icon and this will allow me to modify the text so I will write after. As you can see, the text is in place, it's centered and it also has the same drop shadow and color just like the other one. Awesome, so let's get back to the animation in the timeline panel and also make the before text visible again here. If your texts are not at the start of the animation on the timeline, this is not a problem. You just have to drag both of them very easily to the start. I need to use the zoom again just to make sure I can see the endpoints of the text layers. For the before text, I drag the endpoint at the one second mark. This is exactly where the before image ends as well. Now I can drag the start point of the after text and bring it where the second image appears, which is at the one second mark as well. And for the end point, of course, I need to bring it here to the two second mark, exactly where the second image ends. Okay, before showing you how to save, how to export this animation as a GIF, let's play it and see what it looks like. So from my point of view, this looks great and it's easy to do. 
But what do you think? Does this look better than a simple, static, and uh, boring image on social media? I really want to know what you think, so drop a comment below. Now let's export this animation as a GIF. I'm going to File, Export, Export As. From this dropdown, you will need to select GIF, and then make sure you resize the GIF so that's accepted on social media. Instagram requires you to export at 1080 pixels in width. Then you can click on export and after you choose a folder, Photoshop will save your file in that location. And there's one more important thing that you need to know, which is how to crop your photo properly before you upload it to social media. For this one, I use the 4x5 crop, which is accepted by all platforms, but you can also crop to 1x1 or 9x16 if you want, for example. So I highly recommend this video on the screen next because it explains how to avoid cropping mistakes and sharpness mistakes before uploading your photo or GIF to social media. I'm Christy, catch you in the next one and make sure you press the thumbs up on this one.